We spend a lot of our time around here thinking about advanced future technology like electric cars, spaceships, and solar energy. Inventions that can take us to new places and open up new possibilities. And in that mindset, we can often overlook the more simple necessities of life and how they can also be improved by the capabilities of modern technology. Let's talk about the air that we breathe, something that most of us probably take for granted, but we shouldn't. If the air is too hot, then we can't function very well. If the air gets too cold, then we can die. If the air isn't clean, then we actually start to lose mental capacity and we don't think properly. The majority of the energy that we generate in North America goes towards controlling the temperature of our air, either heating it or cooling it. So we know that if we want to reduce our overall consumption and make our society more sustainable, then we probably should go after the biggest contributor to our energy problem, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, also known as HVAC. And if you've seen the news lately, then you know that energy has become a global concern this year. It definitely isn't the sexiest technology out there, but it is critically important, and somehow, among his obsessions with electric cars and spaceships, Elon Musk manages to spend a lot of his time thinking about air, and how Tesla can make it better, not just inside their cars, but eventually inside our homes and buildings as well. So, let's get into the future potential of Tesla-designed HVAC systems. So, when we are talking about the future of heating and cooling, we are mostly referring to a device called a heat pump. They've been around for a long time, but have only really started becoming common over the last 10 years or so. The prevalence of the heat pump really depends on where you live, because the advantages and disadvantages of this technology are really going to vary according to your climate. The best way to think of a heat pump is like an air conditioner that can swing both ways, heating and cooling from the same machine. The relative heat of the air depends on the amount of energy that it contains, or the speed at which the molecules in the air are moving. On a hot day, the energy from the sun transfers into the molecules of the air and accelerates their movement, and then those fast-moving molecules impact your skin and transfer their energy into your skin and your blood vessels, and that makes your body hotter. And then you start to sweat. Your body releases moisture, which absorbs that heat energy and evaporates, creating a cooling effect. So, energy in equals heat, energy out equals cool. The cooling side of a heat pump works the same as any regular air conditioner. A super cold liquid refrigerant is running through a coil of pipe that is surrounded by these conductive metal fins. And when your fan blows hot air from the room through this coil, the energy from the air molecules is absorbed into the liquid of the coil, and as long as the air coming out the other side of that coil has a lower amount of energy than the ambient air in your room, the air flowing in will feel cold. The molecules will be impacting your skin at a lower velocity and will transfer less energy into your body. And that is a wonderful thing. We love air conditioning. But it uses a massive amount of energy to do what it does, because in order to have that constant supply of super cold liquid, the machine actually has to generate a lot of heat. And we know that heat equals energy. So, as that refrigerant liquid absorbs energy from the air, it obviously begins to heat up and evaporate. The liquid that we use for this process is typically Freon. It boils at an extremely low temperature, below negative 20 degrees Celsius or negative 4 Fahrenheit. So even in its evaporated states, the Freon is still cold, but it's not cold enough. So how do we cool it down back to its liquid state again? Well, we actually first have to make it even hotter. So the evaporated refrigerant hits an electric compressor, and when you compress a gas, you concentrate the energy it contains. You accelerate the molecules and you create heat. That super hot gas is then fed into another coil on the opposite side of the machine, where another fan blows air through it, which absorbs energy from the hot gas 
and carries it outside into the environment. The refrigerant gas is still very hot at this point when it exits the coil back into the system. It's starting to condense back into a liquid, but it needs help to get cold again. That's where the expansion valve comes in. So if rapidly compressing a gas makes it get much hotter, then rapidly decompressing it will have the opposite effect. All of that energy and activity will suddenly slow right down. It's like when you use a can of compressed air. When you release the gas, it gets really cold. Then your cold liquid out of the expansion valve goes back into the cooling coil and the ambient air is blown over it, which causes evaporation and then back into the compressor. It's a closed loop cycle, which is good because Freon gas eats holes in our ozone layer. We learned that the hard way. Now in heating mode, a heat pump just works in the opposite direction. The heat generated by the hot compressed Freon gas is blown into the house and in order to evaporate the Freon, it only needs to rise above the boiling point, which again is super cold. So as long as the ambient temperature outside your house is above negative 20 degrees Celsius or negative four Fahrenheit, then the heat pump can use that air to create Freon gas, which is then compressed to make heat. So it's a really cool system, air conditioning and furnace all in one. And most importantly, this heating effect doesn't require burning fossil fuels like a traditional furnace, which will typically burn either natural gas, propane, or even liquid oil. And we know that when we burn things, we create carbon as a byproduct, which goes into the atmosphere and creates an excess warming effect for the planet, and that's bad. And that's where we come back to Elon Musk and Tesla. My sister recently got married, so our family tree is growing and changing quickly, which is why I'm excited to share today's sponsor, MyHeritage. With over 90 million trusted users, MyHeritage is the number one family history service in Europe. It's fun and easy to build your family tree and discover your origins, and you might also find new relatives. Even if you don't know much about your family's origins, MyHeritage can find new family members and records of your ancestors for you with little effort with over 18 million records at your fingertips. And if you want the best results and to learn as much as possible, you can order a DNA kit to reveal your unique heritage, the ethnic groups and geographic regions you originate from, and find new relatives you never knew existed. With a simple cheek swab that takes just two minutes, you'll receive your results online in four weeks. There is so much to learn about yourself, but MyHeritage is also much more. You can use their AI technology to repair, animate, colorize, and enhance old family photos. This technology is quite amazing for touching up those old family photos. My grandparents were shocked to see old pictures of them with their parents so clear, but be careful with the animated versions. Don't want to give them a heart attack. Right now, you can sign up for a 14-day trial and enjoy all the amazing features MyHeritage has to offer. If you decide to continue your subscription, you'll get a 50% discount using my link in the description below. We know that Elon Musk is fixated on transitioning the world to sustainable energy and maximizing efficiency. Heat pumps do both of those things. So obviously it's a technology that Elon is into and it's something that he talks about surprisingly often. Tesla introduced their first heat pump with the release of the Model Y in 2020. This was a major step forward for electric cars that was badly needed. Your typical combustion engine vehicle doesn't have any trouble producing heat because there is so much excess created by the engine. Combustion is a release of energy. Energy is heat. But an electric car doesn't have any of that to work with, so they need an electric heater. The traditional approach here would be a resistive heater, where you flow energy from the battery through a resistive metal element, that metal gets hot, and then you flow air over the element to absorb its energy and push it into the cabin of the vehicle. This system works great, but it requires a lot of energy drawn from the battery pack, which is energy that is not going to drive the car, and that means lower range. The heat pump accomplishes the same thing, but does it in a much more energy efficient way. So we remember that the heat pump uses the ambient air temperature to evaporate the liquid refrigerant into a gas. Even if the outside air is cold, it will still boil the refrigerant. 
So that work is being done for free by the energy from the air outside. Then the compressor just takes that gas and compresses it to generate the heat, which gets blown into the cabin. So because the heat pump is getting free labor from the energy contained in the air, it gets about three times the efficiency rating of a resistive electric heater, and that means it draws significantly less energy from the battery. Of course, now that all falls apart if your ambient temperature falls below the boiling point of your refrigerant. That definitely does happen where I live, but that doesn't happen where most of you live. In most populated areas of Canada, we occasionally get temperatures below negative 20 Celsius in late January and early February. And there definitely were some reported issues with Tesla's heat pumps failing to produce heat in those conditions. So this is not a solution for everyone, but it still works great for most people. And now Elon wants to put that technology in your house. It's an idea that he first started talking about while he was stoned on the Joe Rogan podcast back in 2018. He said that there was a lot of room to make homes more efficient with heating and cooling, and he talked about a smart home system that could connect with your car so that the house automatically knows when you leave and when you are on your way back, and it can use that information to regulate the temperature. It won't waste energy maintaining the climate when there is no one inside the house, but the house will always be the perfect temperature when you arrive home. Joe asked if he was actually developing something like that, and Elon said, I cannot answer questions about potential future products. Then he brought the idea back to the surface in 2020 by writing on Twitter, sure would love to do home HVAC that's quiet and efficient with humidity control and HEPA filter. So now we are bringing another idea into play, which is air quality. We know that Tesla's top tier vehicles, the Model S and Model X, have built-in HEPA air filters, jokingly referred to as bioweapons defense mode. But this is really just a very high quality filter that removes at least 99.97% of all fine particle matter and gaseous pollutants from the air. And that includes bacteria, viruses, pollen, and mold spores. Elon says that this is 10 times better air quality than any other car. Wouldn't that be a great thing to have for the air in your house? Now, not many people really appreciate the value of clean air, but it does go beyond just filtering out viruses and allergies. Even just elevated levels of CO2 from stagnant airflow can have an effect on your body. A stuffy room can get up to 1,000 parts per million of CO2, and that level can actually make your brain get fuzzy and you can't think properly. Tesla's former head of AI, Andre Karpathy, carries a CO2 monitor with him at all times, and Elon Musk keeps one at his desk that alerts him anytime levels rise above 1,000. So, just something to consider. Now, we have two existing things that Tesla already makes, and they just need to be scaled up from vehicle size to house size. Of course, heat pumps for houses already exist, we just talked about that, but Elon thinks that Tesla can do it better. He said before that the unit Tesla created for the Model Y is exceptional. He wrote on Twitter a couple of years ago, Model Y heat pump is some of the best engineering I've seen in a while. Team did next level work. And he went on to explain the reason for that, writing, PCB design techniques applied to create a heat exchanger that is physically impossible by normal means. Heat pump also has a local heating loop to spool up fast and extend usable temperature range. Octavalve is pretty special too. Team did great work, no credit to me." End quote. And this is probably why Tesla was able to alleviate a lot of the associated heat pump issues in super cold weather with a software update last winter. So when it got to that point in early February when those of us in the frozen north hit the coldest of the cold weather, the Tesla heat pumps that were now being used in every new vehicle, they weren't really cutting it. The NHTSA even got concerned that the pumps couldn't put out enough heat to keep the windshield defrosted. Tesla was able to recalibrate the pump using a firmware update that seemed to fix the problem. So again, that sounds like a great thing to have in your house. High efficiency air conditioning, electric heating, and air purification all in one single unit that can get firmware updates. 
It's still something that Elon is talking about. Even recently in July, he responded to someone who asked about home HVAC with a HEPA filter to deal with allergies. Elon wrote, it's on the future product list, especially important in places like Austin, which has next level amounts of pollen in the air. So what could that look like? Most people are envisioning a kind of smart home system built on Tesla's existing solar power and battery storage system with the HVAC integrated into that. So the brain of your system would know how much energy is generated by the solar cells on your roof, how much is stored in your Powerwall batteries, and how much of that is required to address heating and cooling with your home. And a very smart artificial intelligence, kind of like the one that Tesla already develops for self-driving and other applications, could manage that distribution in the most efficient way possible. Especially when you incorporate your car into the smart home ecosystem. Now it knows when you leave, when you're on your way home, and it would even know how much charging your car is going to require overnight. So you are centralizing and maximizing the efficiency of a lot of very complex systems in your house. You get the best performance possible without even having to think about it. And that goes beyond just making life very comfortable. Obviously, that sounds like a massive luxury, but it's really the efficiency that makes this so compelling. If we are going to transition the majority of homes away from natural gas and fossil fuel-based heating, then there needs to be a really compelling alternative that makes sense from a financial perspective. If I'm going to have my existing natural gas furnace torn out and replaced with something new, then I'm really going to need to see some concrete benefits to doing that. It's not a minor home renovation project, it's a really big deal. So it would be cool to hear from some people who are already running this kind of system in your house, especially if you've transitioned from a fuel furnace to an electric heat pump. Let us know in the comments below what kind of difference that makes for your utilities and efficiency. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.